they multiply. Kicking off the next update here. Again, it's kind of minor stuff. I'm gonna share it. Uh, you can see it looks like got a little hat up top. Turret install. Got that taken care of. Show you some of the little stuff I've got done inside the cab. I'm gonna go over the fix for my central tire inflation system. Again, I'm still kicking this can down the road, my full overview video of the CTIS. I wanna make sure it's right, so I'm really gonna take my time with it, and I wanna make sure I have like a whole weekend to record everything, and I wanna wait until I pull a hub apart and all that stuff to show you all the seals better than my hub rebuild video that I recently posted and kinda of not proud of. I didn't do the greatest job on that video. So one of the first little things in the cab, these little buggers, I got two of them in here. Unity Tactical makes these, and uh, this is two pieces actually. Come with a Velcro on the back, and what their intention is, these are meant to like go on your helmet or somewhere on your gear, and they're meant to be like a marker. They make them in infrared, red, green, and they have a low, high, and then a beacon. You can see, you touch, squeeze it, turns on low, high, and then a beacon. They recently came out with the second piece. It's called, it's called the Spark. I'm sorry, I should have said it. It's called the Unity Spark. Then they have this thing called the Spark Cage. And you can see it's just sticking here. It has some real strong magnets built into it. And then also some one inch webbing. And again, the, the, the intention of this is for tactical gear stuff. So you can quickly put this like on your gear if you don't have Velcro in a particular spot or stick it to metal. And I did have a spot up top for a while with Velcro, but South Texas, it gets so darn hot, the Velcro actually, the, the backing started to melt off the roof. And then this whole darn truck's metal. So when this spark cage piece came out, it was awesome. Cause now I can take this anywhere. And I got one down low here. So when I'm first getting in the truck, if it's dark, you know, I can squeeze this thing on, get in the truck. You know, you gotta go through then I got another one up there on the roof. And I can take these and move them around wherever I want. So even if say you start the truck and you put the cab up and you're doing something underneath the cab, you can take this, you can stick it anywhere you want in the truck. Say you got total battery failure with the truck and you're sitting in the middle of the darn road. It acts as a emergency beacon. I mean, you name it, you can put this thing anywhere on your truck and it's cool. Now, for what this thing is, it's kind of expensive. It's good, it's waterproof, drop proof, simple, small. It's pretty bright. <clears throat> the other thing that's neat about this too is I do use my truck with night vision, so I'm a dork. I have infrared versions of these too, so the Unity Spark just pops out of the cage and I can swap this for my infrared version. So then I have infrared illumination inside the cab not just red. These are neat. They can be moved around anywhere for anything. Thought it was cool. Should I know Harbor Freight has got some like magnet lights and stuff. I've done some off-road and hit some rough bumps with the truck and it doesn't seem like it, but these rare earth magnets hold really well. I had some of the Harbor Freight cheapo flashlights in here for a bit. Those magnets don't hold very well. So I wouldn't trust some of those up on the roof to just fall on your head. I realized when I had pulled the abandoned fuel tank suction line that the vent breather little check valve thing, whatever you want to call it, was missing from the line for the fuel tank. So I'd got the appropriate fittings and I'd had this just laying around my house from a scrap bin. And it's the proper one that are on these trucks. Ran it up where it needs to and tucked. I should get a zip tie and I'll attach it, but I just put that on. Another thing I got was uh, put the center seat back in. I uh, had the spring jacked up, but uh, that's uh, some multi-cam uniform quick patch. And cut away and cleaned up where the hole was, and then just put that patch on there. That way the kids can sit up there and not worry about a spring poking through their shoulder. All right, what do you think, Mackie? Is it better with that patch on the seat? Yeah. Is it? 
Yes. <laughs> you like it better too because you sat up there. It's better than getting poked. Remember how it used to poke you on that little hole in the seat? Yeah. <laughs> I put just one of my little rifle holders back in and this is some of the uh, shot cord that's usually used on tactical type gear. The old racks do a crappy job of holding different size rifles. They were designed to just hold an M16 with a regular A2 handguard. This really isn't super fast, but it works great. Uh, you can tuck it up here, put whatever size rifle, as long as it's got a butt stock, and it will reach up this high. Stretch this around it, and then once it's on, pull it tight. I'm doing this one-handed. Then pull that tight, and it holds really good. Uh, this isn't going to be my permanent solution to holding a service rifle in here. Uh, it was just kind of, this is what I had, and it didn't cost me anything. So on my CTIS malfunctions, I had three major things that I had to work through. First one was my controller up in the cab had five solid lights. I replaced it. I'll show you that that works now. You can see it's already done its check. Uh, highway mode. Here, check the pressure. And it was good, so it's not going to do anything. And when you boot the truck up, it may fill it a little bit. It's checking again. Double checks to make sure it's good. Uh, I'm going to splice in a little time lapse I made of it going through all the different pressures. mine program to go up to 80 psi instead of 70 for highway so that's a little different uh, I'm just really happy it works the only little thing it hiccups every once in a while is if you select highway after you've tried to deflate it sometimes the rear quick release will stick open every once in a while but it'll still fill and then it only happens every once in a while, so I haven't really worried about it too much. And what it may be is I may just have a little teeny bit of debris in there that needs to get cleaned out and it may blow itself out. I don't over worry about it. The next problem I had after getting the controller was that if you'd watched this whole process, I was missing on this wheel a uh, hose. When I took the one off the spare and put it on there, it would start filling, but it would start fill in this particular tire slowly then when it was finished this wheel would stick open which then would cause the quick release to stay open fought it forever and what i isolated it to was there being a blockage in in the hub somewhere i'll go into that now all right i took my hub off again after it not working with the service and even though air would pass through it, you could see I removed the line on the hub that goes from the lug into the actual hub. And there is a huge something in there. It looks like a dead bug or something. So I'm going to work it out. That's absolutely what my obstruction was. It was in this tube, sort of like I suspected. I should have pulled this apart when I had the hub apart the first time. All right, I'm gonna blow this out. I don't even know what it is, look at it. It's like a mix between rust and mud. Yeah, I, yeah the little piece that came out before was Here's the end going into the center of the hub as well. 
I'm wondering if what this is is maybe there was a lot of RTV buildup. I wonder if this is all RTV that got like really hardened or bonded to like dust and dirt getting in the system. I had similar issue with this side valve, same side, getting stuck open and the quick release that's under there for the front axle. It was a similar, but not at all similar problem where there was a airflow obstruction. And what it was, was actually the wheel on the other side, which is this hose in my hand, had a kink in it. I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but that pinch right there was basically causing the air to not purge fast enough. So that couple PSI that's needed to come back that causes the quick release to open. It was causing the quick release to open. Same thing that was happening in the back with the obstruction going through the hub. So yeah, having any sort of air obstructions that's gonna allow air to not like immediately go between your valve on here, that's on the wheel valve, to the quick release is gonna cause an issue where the valve's gonna get stuck open. It can get a lot more complicated than that because I went through like all the troubleshooting stuff. And like I've mentioned many times in my videos, I'm going to make like a full breakdown of the troubleshooting on the CTIS. That'll explain it better. But the system is working. I just, I'm, I'm so happy about that because that was one of my, one of the most important things to have working on these trucks for me. Next thing is finally this M66 turret is getting installed on the cab. I've already done it before recording this clip, but I'm going to remove the turret cover. So I usually post tools and things like that, but probably nobody's going to be installing the turret on their truck. But one thing that I know a lot of people want to do is find the bolt. The size bolts, if you are trying to replace them for your turret cover, which is what I'm taking off of my truck, is an M12, 1.75 thread, and 25 millimeter. Now the ones that come on the truck are Allen screw type cap screws. What I decided, I bought these by mistake thinking that they were going to be the same length for the turret, but they're not. Uh, same thread pitch, but in 40 millimeter is what you use to mount the turret on. And there's 12 of them for both. I just got regular bolts instead of cap screws. Doesn't really matter unless you want it to look nice and flush up there. But other than that, there's so many different variables and ways to lift and things you might run into. I'm not really gonna go over tools and stuff for this project. All right, got it off. And uh, there's a little bit of damage right here that could easily be banged out. I have no idea why this is like pried up. And uh, the threads don't look bad clean them out put some WD I don't I have no idea why the existing ones that were in here weren't fastened down all the way but uh clean it up and get ready to put the actual M66 turret up here all right here's the setup I got got the winch coming off the front of my super duty running up to a tree sling and a big snatch block and then tied off to some straps and it looks really cattywampus but it picks up even and it's going to be just enough clearance so I can drive the truck forward. What do you think about this mom bod? <laughs> um, it's a great plan and I think it's going to work. Golden Finch Artistry. <laughs> Got it mostly in place. Just gotta get the gasket lined up and start bolting it down. All right, <clears throat> just finished 
bolting it up. Uh, it took a little while. What I needed to do was we needed to get all the bolts and stuff lined up, finagle it. Uh, some of these did not go all the way in because they were so rusty. Uh, chasing out the threads weren't wasn't going to do anything. So much moisture had been in there over time. They had rotted out. So I had got them in there as far as I can. It is what it is. I haven't made up my mind what I'm going to try to do. But this thing's not going anywhere. There's plenty that are in here good. Little issue with it binding up in one spot. After troubleshooting it for a while, what I determined it is, is up in the front where it was bent up a little bit and I had talked about hammering it down. It's causing the gasket to rise up a little bit. And then there's some bolts underneath. So when the locking mechanism goes over that spot, it's rubbing the gasket just a little bit under there. And I cut some of the gasket away you can see it right there, but then there's a bunch of rubber chips and it's worn itself in pretty well. Over time, I think that's going to go away. This is not a ratchet. Or an impact. That's rusty. Ratchet that's rail. just rusty threads and big techs. That's tight. <laughs> that's definitely tight. The next part is going to be the cover for this, which I know is probably what everyone is wondering about. Alright, so I got a multi-pack of these weldable tabs off of Amazon. I measured out and made some markings and ground off the paint. And I'm going to weld these tabs, something like this, evenly spaced here, off the back on the ring that mounts to the truck. And then, obviously, paint them to keep the rust. And, uh already measured it out to so be happy with it and uh, use my cheapo Harbor Freight welder get them welded on here So painted and cleaned it up, tied off some of the shot cord rope, and then it looks really sloppy because it is really sloppy. Got some RTV and uh, the bolts that were sticking up a little ways, and the bolts, or the bolt that broke, filled it in. I was going to use caulk, but I had a tube of RTV that was open. So, I uh, just filled it in. Here's what I got for the cover. This is actually a copy of the second version that the military made of the M66 cover. So here's what it looks like from up top and uh, the way the brackets ended up. Everything's cinched down tight and uh, did go drive around a bit, even with the windows down and this thing barely flops around even though it's got a little bit of play. It looks like my plan worked out pretty good here. Brackets hold up. Uh, I am worried about over time this wearing out, but maybe what I'll do eventually is replace this with like a stainless braided type cord that I need to crimp. But I have this from some of my tactical gear stuff and this stuff's pretty robust. And then the other thing I was thinking about was uh, I have some leftover rare earth magnets from uh, another firearms project that are kind of like flush mount. I may drill and bolt those so that way when these things are not being used or something, they're not gonna flop around everywhere. You know, once I put them down and let them be here, they'll hold themselves against the truck because I did notice it was really windy and these things start doing this and as you all know, some of you guys got your cabs nice and insulated, but I leave mine kind of military-ish. And it sounds like a freaking drum on the inside. It's basically it. I'm just going to have to take it off one day. It's been real windy here in South Texas lately, so trying to spray paint and clean the rest of this up, I'm going to end up getting overspray all over the place. But uh, that's just cosmetic. So turret project is done. It's installed. Did rain a bit this didn't really leak uh, we'll see when we get some heavy rains and uh, next part of the project which I do have lined up and I'm just waiting is I'm gonna get a semi-automatic 
M1919A4 mounted up here with a crank fire and a traversing bar and all that stuff and uh, that's going to be cool. So that's going to wrap up this update. I do have some more big projects to come. I've been spending some time getting some of the little details worked out. I'll give you a little sneak peek of what we got lined up. Drove to Georgia, but you're not going to see all the components here. And uh, picked up the complete PTO and winch system from uh, Michael Bowen and his business to install on my truck. And I also got locally the complete, just got it tucked away to get it out of the way here, uh, AC install. I got the various components of it all tucked away here in the garage, but I got the compressor, brackets, pulleys, wire harness, fans, all that stuff. And uh, I had like a few bolts and things like that missing, but uh, everything's here. Everything's ready to go now. And uh, I got some few spares. It's just a matter of really setting up a good couple of days because I know all this stuff's going to be quite the project to install. The winch and the AC, I might as well do it at the same time because a lot of like running the wires for the controls that go out to the winch, for example, are going to be underneath the center console unit. So when I got it removed, I might as well be doing that stuff. It's going to be quite the project. I'm going to need a couple extra hands. Maybe Bam Bam and Big Tex will be here with me. And I got like, to replace the entire pieces that attach to the frame here too. For the front and back fair leads and things.